Selectors specify which elements are styled by which declarations. A selector can be one or more element names, class names, ID names, or a combination of elements, class names, and or ID names. In addition to these selectors is the universal selector, represented by an asterisk. The universal selector is used to style all elements within a web page. Let's look at the universal selector now. Here we have a basic web page that consists of three header elements, specifically an h1 element, an h2 element, and an h3 element. We also have a paragraph element and an unordered list with three list items. Notice the font size on these different elements is different based on default styling rules. Using the universal selector, we can apply one or more rules to every single element like such. If you recall in a previous video, we used the universal selector to remove the browser default margin and padding like such. It's a good practice to do this with your web pages to avoid any issues that might arise with the default margin and padding rules. Let's remove all the rules we have set in the universal selector except the margin and padding rules. Now let's use element selectors to specify rules on an element level. To do so, we will type the element name followed by a declaration block like such. We'll go ahead and make H1 elements have a font color of green and H2 elements have a color of blue. We'll go ahead and change the H3 element to an H1 element to show that the CSS rule we set for H1 elements applies to all H1 elements. Similarly, if we change this new H1 element to an H2 element, it will be styled to be blue. We can go on using element selectors for the other elements on the page to apply other CSS rules on an element level. We can also target multiple elements to style by using a comma to separate however many elements we want to apply the same styles to like such. Notice the rules set to the individual element selectors still apply, such as the color styling on the header elements and the italic styling on the paragraph element. Also notice the list items font family did not change as we did not include the ally selector in our list of elements to be styled here. Now let's look at class selectors. One or more class names can be applied to any HTML element using the class attribute. Then we can apply styling to elements using the class name as a selector. For example, Let's add the class name black bg white text to our paragraph element here. The second list item here and our h1 element here. Let's also remove the color styling we have set for our h1 element here to avoid confusion. Now we can add a class selector to our CSS styles by typing a period followed by the class name like such. Now within the declaration block of this class selector, we will add background color black and color white as CSS rules. When we save our file and reload our page in the browser, we can see the elements we assigned the class black bg white text to have a black background and white text, and the ones that don't contain the class name do not have the styling. Notice we can apply multiple class names to any element by separating the class names by a space. So here I'm going to add another class name to our paragraph element of large text. Then I'll add another class selector to our styles that makes any element with an assigned class of large text have a font size of 37 pixels. Notice I can add this class name to any other element. For example, I'll add it to the last list item in the unordered list. Let's go ahead and remove all the styling we have set aside from the styling contained within the universal selector. We'll also remove all the class attributes along with their assigned values. Now we will look at ID selectors. 
Just like classes, an element can be assigned an ID value in the same manner. For example, I'll assign the paragraph element an ID of small text to target this ID and apply styles to the element that has been assigned it, we will use a hash or pound sign followed by the ID we are applying styles to. In this declaration block, I'll go ahead and put font size 7 pixels. When we save the file and reload the web page, we can see our paragraph element text is smaller, having a font size of 7 pixels. Unlike class attributes, the ID attribute can only contain one value. It's important to know that ID attributes should only be used for one specific element. While adding the same ID to another HTML element on our page will make both elements styled, this is bad practice. IDs are meant to be unique to a specific element, meaning one and only one element should contain a particular ID. Why this is the case is outside of the scope of this video, but for now just know, if you want to target multiple elements using a selector other than an element selector or a universal selector, use a class selector. If you're targeting one and only one element, using an ID selector is okay. Now, just like we previously combined multiple element selectors, separating each by a comma, we can combine any variety of element, class, or ID selectors using commas as well. As an example, I'll add an ID attribute to our paragraph element with the value of blue text, and add a class attribute to our H2 element here with the value of blue text. Now, in our styles, I'll type h1 as an element selector to target h1 elements, comma, hash blue text to target our paragraph element that has been assigned an ID of blue text, comma, dot blue text to target the h2 element that has been assigned a class of blue text. Now, when we save this file and reload our web page, we can see the h1 element, the paragraph element, and the h2 element all contain blue text because of the CSS rule we just set. The selectors discussed in this video are not the only selectors that can be used when styling HTML elements. We will further discuss selectors in a future video. However, in starting off with CSS selectors, the ones mentioned in this video and the methods to implementing them will allow you to get a good grasp on the fundamentals of CSS selectors.